is the ships that are trapped in Odessa are trapped there, not just because the Russians might have a Gurton if they went out, but also there are um, Ukrainian mines have been laid to... Um, you know, to stop the Russians invading. Time to invite you into our daily briefing room, where one of our leading tactical and strategic minds with years of experience as a general officer at the highest level of military command shares their insights into the current state of the war in Ukraine. Uh, we're welcoming back to the show Admiral Lord West, former Chief of Defence Intelligence and a Security Minister. Uh, Lord West, welcome back to the show. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Now, we're hearing that it's been reported, rather, that Ukraine is preparing to destroy the Russian Navy's Black Sea fleet with Western weapons uh, and to try and take back Crimea. This is certainly what Kyiv's defence minister has said, deputy defence minister has said. Now, we, we've touched on this briefly yesterday, but there have been more reports in today's Times newspaper. What's your take on, on what you think might happen? Um, I, 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 I am... I think it's highly unlikely that Ukraine are in a position to go and take back Crimea. Um, but I have no doubt that they would like to um, cause damage to and curtail operations by the Russian back Black Sea Fleet. I mean, that is quite a large fleet. It's based in Sevastopol in the Crimea. Um, the Russians, of course, lost the Moscow, which is their flagship. They uh, also lost one of the landing craft. They've got uh, seven of them, well, now six. Uh, landing craft of various sizes, but quite capable landing craft, and two were damaged. Uh, and there have also been a couple of other ships that were, were lost, and uh, these were lost, I mean, Moscow was lost by a Neptune-type missile, a very large one-ton missile, um, that, that uh, it, two of them hit the ship and sank it. Uh, and they are well capable of hitting ships in Sevastopol, um, as long as they know the ships are there and they have a GPS sort of position for them. Mm. Um, and I think they would like to do that. Um, that doesn't mean, of course, that they can retake Crimea. And Crimea is um, very much a Russian-speaking, Russian-thinking area, even though it's Ukraine, if you see what I mean. Um, and I think it's uh, it would be a huge escalation if they tried to, to mount a sort of attack. And the only way they could do it, really, is to go through um, the region south of the Donbass, with sufficient forces to do it. And I can't see that happening because they're at the moment being ground down by the uh, by Russian forces in the Donbass. And they haven't, uh, the Ukrainians have not got sufficient uh, amphibious or ships to actually carry out an amphibious assault. So they couldn't do that either. Mm. So I think what we're hearing is a much more likelihood of attacks on those ships. And also we heard that the Russians were moving ships from Sevastopol along towards Novorossiysk and, uh, and the Sea of Azov, which is out of the range of those Ukrainian missiles. Uh, and I think that shows that they think that's likely to happen as well. Um, and of course, the Russian senior military have said that it would be a doomsday action if the Ukrainians did anything like attack Crimea. So that, that is quite a sort of worrying threat as well. Yes, I think they referred it to be, it would be likening it to, to Judgment Day if, if that was the, the case. So in your estimation, if they obviously didn't want to mount this uh, attack on, on Crimea to take Crimea back, if they um, could attack some of these ships, would that um, help them in terms of, you know, exporting Ukrainian grain, for example? Well, I think the fact that they've, effectively driven uh, uh, the Russian Navy away from their coast. And if the Russian Navy are withdrawing ships to Novorossiysk, um, they've, they've achieved part of what they want to do, which is remove the threat of amphibious assault around Odessa. Snake Island they've captured again. Um, as I understand it, they're looking at renovating some of the ports um, that they've got, uh, other ports in, uh, that they have control over. Um, so there are, there's an option for grain to go out of those. But the real problem still is the ships that are trapped in Odessa are trapped there, not just because the Russians might have a Gurton if they went out, but also there are um, Ukrainian mines have been laid to, um, you know, to stop the Russians invading. So I think there's a mine threat, there's a mine issue. The Russians are still capable of carrying out attacks on shipping that goes out if, if it's, but it will be neutral shipping. So that would be very interesting to see you know, there would be quite a kickback about actions like that. Um, the Turks are trying to negotiate with 
the Ukrainians and, and Russians about grain shipments. And there is a huge imperative to get grain moving. I mean, this is having a dramatic impact on some of the poorest areas in the world where there's a real risk of starvation. So there is an imperative to try and achieve that. But I can't see it opening up quickly and easily. That's the trouble. Mm. And another story which is interesting, and um, we're going to be discussing it a bit later in the programme, uh, Lord West, is that President Putin has made a, a rare trip outside the, the Kremlin uh, and he's gone uh, to meet the Iranian authorities um, with the uh, Turkish president, uh, er- Erdogan. Um, what do you think about, about this meeting and this gathering? Well, I think it's very important for Putin. Um, he, he'll be very pleased that he's able to show himself as a as a player on the world stage and there's no doubt with Iran what he's trying to do is come up with some agreements which will break the uh, the sanctions that the West have applied to Russia um, and so that will be a lovely sort of deal for him he's got to be wary of dealing with Turkey Turkey is a member of NATO and Erdogan isn't a great friend of Putin but equally um, he's behaved slightly strangely on a couple of occasions in terms of buying Russian equipment and things like that. Um, I mean, Erdogan could help unlock the situation of the grain ships, as I say, but Putin will be working flat out to get the Iranians into some sort of deal to break sanctions. And of course, the Iranians are a bit of a pariah because the JCPOA discussions, these were the joint discussions to stop uh, the Iranian enrichment of, uh, of uranium and slow down their chance of getting a nuclear weapon. Those, those fell apart because Trump didn't agree with it. Um, and they, the talks are deadlocked. They haven't got any further. So there's no doubt the Iranians have got a large amount of uh, enriched uranium. They're not yet able to make a bomb. Um, but of course, the Russians are able to make bombs. So I do find it slightly worrying when Putin's cozying up to the Iranians. Mm. Well, look, fascinating insight there. Thank you very much for your time this afternoon. That's Admiral Lord West, former Chief of Defence Intelligence and former Security Minister. 